Welcome back to Sports Radio 95.9 The Fan. My name is Mark, and yes, this is the Mark Moses Show. Weekday afternoons from 3 to 6 p.m. Right now here on the Club 52 Hotline, great friend of mine up there in Gainesville, covers the Florida Gators for all their sports. His name is Andrew Spivey with Gator Country. You can give him a follow on Twitter. It's a must if you love the Gators. Andrew Spivey, GC. Andrew, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Mark. How about yourself? Hey, I, I was in Gainesville. I saw the spring game, so maybe you need to interview me. Maybe that's how we should start this interview. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, uh, Recruiting always uh, comes first. Oh, man. Now, you were in Atlanta. I just want to get this straight. You were in Atlanta for another one of these, like, Elite 11 camps? I mean, are there, like, 10,000 of these camps now? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's becoming a it's becoming an art of, of, of the sponsorships. Nike has their on, Under Armour has their on, uh, this person has their on. It, it, it's, it's all basically turning into a let's get every football player in the in the nation to come out to these football camps. But it's good for for some of the the younger guys to get out and compete. So it's it's a good thing for for some of the guys that some of the the top guys they kind of get tired of it. So what did you see? I got to put you on the spot. What did you see this? Past weekend, oh, some very good quarterbacks. You know, I, th- I think the quarterback class that, that you're looking at for the for the 2015 and 2016 classes is very good. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of elite talent in the Southeast. Uh, some of the guys that are Florida is after that. Um, Adonis Thomas is one of the main guys, Georgia linebacker uh, that was actually uh, visiting Florida. Is another one of the top prospects out of Georgia, and that's something Muschamp's going to continue to do is try to go out to Georgia and, and recruit that state. He, uh, he has the, the bulldog in him already, so kind of going to continue to recruit that southeast and get more guys in besides the state of Florida. We're here with Andrew Spivey, Gator Country. This guy never has a weekend off, like he said. Always something with recruiting going on. But let's talk about the spring game as it was the return of Jeff Driscoll. First time Gator fans have seen him since that injury, what, against Miami last, I believe, uh, September. I know it's been that long. What were your thoughts on the tape and what you saw from Jeff Driscoll? You know, I think you've seen some good things out of Jeff in, the, in that offense of, of Kurt Roper. You, you've seen him kind of settle down and, uh, and, and instead of thinking more so and just reacting. And I think that's a good thing for, for Florida fans to see as he just go out there and, and let his ability take over. Running the ball, he ran the ball really well on Saturday and threw, threw the ball well for, for a guy that was coming off of an injury since September, like you said, and didn't look like he was really hobbled by that leg injury. 33 attempts. Do you think that was too much for him? Because he played most of the spring game. Yeah, I don't think it was too much. I, I think you're going to see that Roper's offense is, is going to be more of a passing offense. Uh, it, it, as much as Muschamp says they're going to run the ball still, it's going to be a lot more passing. So 33 attempts, that's not bad. I think Jameis Winston had, what, 54 yeah. in the FSU spring game. So you, you look at it, and, and you had three quarterbacks kind of sharing the duties. Uh, Greer and Morning White more for the for the uh, blue team, or the orange team, excuse me. So 33 attempts wasn't bad at all. I think he, he threw the ball well. There was a few that he, he overthrew are short on more so, but you're still looking at a new offense and he has a third offense in four years. So I think you've seen some positive things. Now you have three and a half months, a hundred and some days before the first game. So you look at a positive thing for Florida fans, the excitement that they finally have around that offense. You know, you bring up those backup quarterbacks. Morning Way got, what, 14 for 18, two touchdowns. Will Greer, who I wanted to see, I'm very happy he got to play a little, uh, completed some passes, but also threw an interception. Let's go back to Skyler here. He looked a lot more comfortable here in year two. I know it's new offensive coordinator. He got thrown in the fire last year, never should have played. But did you see that as well on tape? I mean, he looked like he was more comfortable being the Gators quarterback. Yeah, I think he kind of settled down a little bit and had the first year jitters of me. You know, he's played in played in several games last year, played against FSU, played against Georgia Southern, so didn't have the jitters of that. And, and again, I think the Roper offense is just an offense that allows for you to kind of calm down and more so just let your ability take over than have to think so much. But definitely, as you said, he's definitely seen a guy that was more uh, confident in his throws. He threw the ball really well on several throws, and you, you really just want Scholar to kind to take over with his abilities and there's no question he's, he's got the, the mental makeup of the, as a coach's son so yeah, I think you've seen positive things out of him and a guy that if Trisco wants to go down again that he could step up and be available back up you're, you're just uh, going to wheel career you're just like man don't you kind of feel like alright this is the future this might be the guy the next guy two or three years down the line 
Absolutely. As I said yesterday, when the, and you and I spoke, I, I think a career as a guy that has a rocket arm that really just has a good, um, good, good, good oppose that can throw the ball really well. It just needs to make, make kind of, uh, get into college and more, more so get used to the SEC ability. Came from a private school in Davidson that didn't have maybe the best of athletes around him. But you look at the SEC with him; he's got the mental makeup of it, he's got the arm strength of it. Just kind of needs to settle down. And, and but you've seen a gunslinging mentality. The first throw he had was the interception, and you have to say maybe that was just college in the swamp that yeah. maybe took over, had a little nervousness out of it. But I really like the way Greer threw the ball and really ran the ball as well. So good things coming out of him. That you, you saw. I haven't seen Treon Harris, the guy that'll be in in August. We're here with Andrew Spivey, Gator Country. Give him a follow on Twitter at Andrew Spivey GC. The running backs, some of them look good. I mean, Mac Brown, he had a lot of carries in this game. He looks like he'll probably be the backup. I know you still got Matt Jones, but I want to get your thoughts on a guy who didn't really play much but had a touchdown in this game. Kelvin Taylor, what were your thoughts on him? I mean, is this his job now when you come to fall camp? I mean, is he the guy, the starting running back for the Gators? You have to think so. Uh, you know, Matt Jones is still going to be Matt Jones. It's not like he lost everything from his freshman year. He had a gruesome injury, but he'll be fine. Uh, but Kelvin Taylor, absolutely. He looked like a guy that maybe had to even gained a little bit of quickness uh, yeah. in the offseason program. But it, the confidence that Kelvin Taylor brings to the table is just, it's out of this world. He, he believes he's the best, and, and that's how he plays. But the one thing that I did see out of Kelvin that kind of lacked last year was his pass blocking ability that he, he really got, did well. Well at it. And another thing with Kelvin is he's going to be able to catch the ball on the backfield. So it was nice to see him get there and uh, kind of get his feet wet again. But I, I was really just poised with it, the way he pass blocked in the offense. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and sticking one more with the offense here, uh, this kid named Robinson, who we thought would be a bigger impact last year, he had a couple catches and a touchdown. How big was he in what you saw on the field on Saturday? He's, he's the home run threat that, that really has been lacking since the Harvin and, and Riley Cooper, uh, since the Harvin and Riley Coopers have been gone. And so I, I think if he can stay good on the field, off the field, excuse me, that he'll be fine. I, his main thing is off the field issues have kept him there. And he's a guy that can just catch the ball. He's about six foot four. And in this offense, if you match him up with Dunbar and the full ones of that, he's going to have a lot of one on one matchups that he's going to be really well at. I, I think that. And his main thing is is just getting faster in his route, and that's something you've seen on Saturday. All right, I was going to ask you that. Okay, when you come in the fall and we go to actual SEC football games, what is your depth chart at wide receiver? And I know I'm putting you on the spot, and, and maybe this is more of a question for Will Muschamp, but in your opinion, who are your top three wide receivers for the Gators this fall? You know, you definitely have to start with Quentin Dunbar, the senior. Uh, you, you have to start with him and, and – if, if Demarcus Robinson's playing well and, and is doing his thing off the field, you have to look at him at the number two two spot. And then a guy, Ahmad Fullwood, is, is the third guy, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Even though he's not really a slot guy, he's more of an outside receiver. But that's kind of your top three. And then you look at a guy like maybe Chris Thompson, playing inside the slot receiver, it could, could do well. And then, of course, you have the freshman coming in. But overall, as much as I said on Saturday, it's just August. Uh, it, it, They've had depth wise in his tenure in four years at Florida. Are we allowed to use the tight end? I think I just asked that question as every Florida Gator fan. It's not since what, Aaron Hernandez, when you really add a dominant tight end for the Gators, right? Absolutely. It, it, it's a it's a situation where you're not going to use a normal tight end in Roper's offense because he's not going to have a, a guy on the inline blocking. So it's going to be more of a flex out guy. And, and DeAndre Goolsby's the guy, the, the freshman out of Kansas, that really showed out in the yeah. fourth quarter. Uh, and I, I think he may be your your most feasible tight end in this offense. Clay Burton, um, and he's more of an inline blocker and a guy that has, has questionable hands uh, with that. But also you have two guys coming in, Morrell Stevens and Seante Lewis, that are both going to be that flex tight end guy. But uh, Matt Jones is another guy that Coach Muschamp talked about possibly splitting out in mm. that tight end flex position in the fall. So uh, a lot of interesting things with Roper's offense. And again, spread the ball out and excitement finally around the team. All right, let's switch gears to the defense from the orange and blue debut from this past Saturday in Gainesville. I was looking at number five, uh, that Tabor kid, and I was very impressed. I know he's very raw, young, but what were your thoughts on how he played? 
Yeah, I, I think Jalen Tabor, much him said it. I, I've said it several times. If you could go and to get, diagram a cornerback, you would describe Jalen Tabor. Big, tall, athletic, fast, just a super athletic freak for Maryland. And, and, and he's, I, I don't want to say this, and, and Florida fans take this the wrong way, but he almost has that Deion Sanders kind of mindset that yeah. I'm the best, that Richard Sherman mindset that you want from your cornerback. Say he knows he's good, and, and he plays like that. And, and you have him, and Duke Dawson was another freshman cornerback out of Cross City that really played well. He's kind of the unforgotten guy after Jalen Tabor landed. So you're looking at three very good corners, Vernon Hargraves and Vernon Hargraves and Tabor together. You could be looking at two cornerbacks that, that do very well for Florida in the man, uh, man-to-man coverage. Well, I know Muschamp in his post game. I was sitting there listening to him talk about the D-line. Very young. They're going to need a lot of work. I mean, what are your thoughts on the depth of that those positions? I think it, it maybe was a little blown out of proportions uh, just because you have Darius Cummings and, and, and you also have Leon Orr who did not play on Saturday. And that, that's two seniors that you're looking at there. So I, I think that they'll be okay. I, I think you're still looking at a guy like Kayla Brantley, Jaynar Boss, like two freshmen that, that really haven't done what they wanted to be. They're both five-star guys coming out of high school, and both have kind of blacked in production so far. Huh. And that's kind of what Coach Muschamp's talked about, needing those guys to step up. But you're looking at a guy like Jonathan Buller sliding inside, and I think you'll be okay once you get Cummings and, and uh, also uh, Leon Orr back at the seniors. And, and you'll be okay. You, you really need four to five guys in Florida's offense to step up, or Florida's defense, excuse me, on the defense line, as much as they like to rotate guys in and out. Okay, so let's let's do the the Cliff Notes version of everything you just said from the spring game. Is this team going to be better in 2014 just because of Kurt Roper? Do you feel like okay, they're going to be better than 4 and 8? Two things. First of all, how can they be worse? <laughs> Second of all, I, I do say Coach uh, Coach Roper has brought, and, and I and I say this with no disrespect to Coach Peace, but Roper, and I'm sure you were able to see this on Saturday for yourself, but you've seen it all spring. He actually is a guy who brings positive energy on the field as far as his coaching technique. He seems like a head coach of the offense that really Coach Muschamp's been looking for. But and the excitement around the team and the guys, they, they, they feel proud to wear that jersey again and I, I think that showed on Saturday. I'm going to end with this and we're here with Andrew Spivey, Gator Country. I want you to know this. I'm sitting in the press box like you do and then I'm running around the concourse I'm talking with fans and you know you're, you're in the media room and everything and I'm like you know it, it's nice weather here. It's not that bad. Then I go on the field after everything's done and I'm like this is extremely warm. How do these players do it, man? I don't understand. I'm from the Midwest where I'm used to snow and the cold. You got to give me the insight. It is like 100 billion degrees on that field. I got to give these players credit in Florida, all right? Absolutely. You know, and you think about that Saturday, you know, that's what, April April 10th? Yeah. That, that was the game. You think about August when they're going through fall camp. It's, it's a crazy the way these guys have gotten into shape. And, and that's one thing Jeff Gilman uh, prouds himself on. And these guys are going to be in shape. And you really seen that, that, that a lot of guys have even bulked up some. And now they're Jeff Gilman's players for the next four months, three and a half months until August reporting day. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how in shape these guys are. It's a young team, so they got a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, I think if Coach Muscat could take it, he'd go in the fall camp and get ready for Idaho right now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Too bad we got over 100 days, just like you and Will Muschamp said. His name is Andrew Spivey, Gator Country. He joins us here every Monday. Next Monday, we'll talk baseball that I know is ranked ninth. All right, man? Sounds good. And by the way, go Braves. Swept the Nationals. <laughs>